return for reviews back with another Bruce Lee first time reviews. This time going to the highly anticipated, highly uh, expected review probably from myself on this channel. It always leading up to this movie. I've gone from The Big Boss, Fist of Fury, Way of the Dragon, and now we have Enter the Dragon, the big one, Warner Bros. production. Bruce Lee got his wish. Monumental film that kind of put his name on the map, made him an international star overnight. Bruce Lee was on fire. Did this one deliver the goods? Was it overhyped? Let's find out, let's check out and discuss Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon was released in 1973, directed by Robert Klaus, who did Jackie Chan's The Big Brawl, which I absolutely hated, for an absolutely terrible movie. Um, however, I've not seen any of his other films uh, during his kind of, you know, filmography. Uh, from what I've seen, he did a lot of action-based kind of movies, a lot of Japanese kind of martial arts, kind of um, Asian-inspired kind of Western interpretations of these types of films. Uh, Simply Rockoff's in one of, the, one of the films he's done as well. So obviously established director, someone who can get the job done, who can make a bit of money, and who obviously he was respectable enough to kind of take on this big, kind of monumental film that is from Warner Brothers Pictures. You know, John Saxon, you've got an all-star cast. However, despite the quality of the films, the box office spoke louder than words, and Warner Brothers heard the call, and they came knocking. And they made probably one of the most influential movies of all time, uh, despite your thoughts and opinions on the quality of the film, whether you think the film holds up or not, whether the um, expectation and the hype and whether the film delivers or whether it underperforms for you, it's all down to personal taste. However, we can't deny the film itself is very much a monumental film, it's a groundbreaking film in terms of a Asian star not necessarily being the lead, but also having a lot of influence over the film, obviously demonstrating his ferocious kind of nature and his kind of his charm, his comedy, his uh, range of kind of performances and his course kick-ass action set moments and Enter the Dragon I will happily say right now is the best one. No surprise probably there for a lot of people but I was really really worried going into this because obviously with the amount of hype and the amount of expectation going into it it's very very difficult to say what kind of film you're going to get and I'm really happy to say that the film does actually deliver. It's definitely my favourite out of Bruce Lee's movie so far, and I think it delivers uh, a pretty solid film. Not an amazing film by any means, not, I think, kind of mind-blowing. It's not going to be a film that you're going to be, uh, you know, necessarily talking about over and over and over again. But obviously, I'm in the minority of that because this film is obviously monumental. It's getting, God knows how many releases, 40th anniversary, 50th anniversary, it's getting a brand new 4K. So obviously, I'm in the kind of outside perspective. I'm going to give you my honest opinion. And I think Into the Dragon definitely delivers what it says us to do. It delivers an all-star cast, delivers like a pretty great premise, until the kind of premise kind of goes away a little bit and it becomes a bit of a, almost of a gimmicky type of film. I think the initial idea, I think is absolutely great. It's basically a Mortal Kombat type of scenario. You've got all the best kind of uh, martial art fighters, different background styles uh, from different parts of the, well, well, the world, and they've all been invited to go onto this island, this very secured island. It basically is having this tournament. Whoever can, you know, be the best can win this grand kind of prize in a sense. You know, you've got this very kind of uh, over the top kind of villain with almost like a James Bond type of thing going on with you know, a missing arm, and he has to have different weapons, and he has like a, he has like a steel kind of arm, and then he has a, a knife later on. This is essentially kind of uh, Bruce Lee's kind of 007, and he even is even asked to infiltrate this I find one evidence on this kind of multi-millionaire tycoon kind of you know Doctor No type of villain uh, we're all dressed in black and doing, you know, doing cheesy one-liners and has lots of henchmen around him which is really really funny also to find the kind of the uh, double agent kind of thing that's gone into the actual facility prior to him and to kind of you know speak to her and to find out what she knows and to kind of get the intel the initial main kind of three or four characters that were presented in the film are pretty good they're all defined really well they're all likeable they're all fun there's some good comedy in it there's some uh, good scenarios that do play out especially with 
entering the islands and you kind of get this hospitality, this kind of rich kind of culture and they can pick any women they want and there's some really cool kind of lines and some great fights, uh, which I do appreciate. You get a really early kind of Samo Hong uh, fighter as well during the start of the film, which is great. Uh, you get a very early Jackie Chan performance as well with one of the henchmen, which is also great. Plenty of motivation, there's plenty of character. Uh, to kind of develop and to work from and uh, I love his suits, I love his kind of his, his back and forth kind of uh, chemistry with all the other cast members. There's some great moments, especially on the boat when he kind of tricks the kind of uh, the kind of the bully kind of you know martial artist on a boat and that's really funny. So there's definitely a good sense of kind of like, you know, uh, I'm not taking shit from anyone kind of thing. And that's great. That's what we like about Bruce. One of the things I mentioned in my last review about the way of the dragon is that this kind of Chekhov's gun kind of theory I mentioned about the idea of introducing guns but not being able to use them for whatever reason, but you have to use them. It's part of a kind of a writing technology. And if you're introducing that kind of idea, you have to pay it off. That's something that the last film struggled with quite a lot. This film does it in the best way possible in the sense of the idea of the island is secured off and you have no guns allowed. So basically when you enter the island, you're not allowed to bring any weapons, you're not allowed to bring any kind of knives. It's very much all about the martial arts, all about the fighting which I think is a really clever because the idea that the bad guy has had a bad experience with guns, he basically, I think he lost his hand from a gun injury in the sense that the idea is that the international waters, the island he owns, don't prohibit any guns, which I think is great because there's no guns in the film. I don't think until the last little bit, maybe if I'm mistaken, um, but that's a very clever way of basically saying, yeah, we're set in the seventies uh, and we know that if a gun is introduced, Bruce can get killed off, any character can get killed off. What's the point of having a martial arts tournament if you're gonna get killed off very, very quickly, very easily? So they work away around that, very clever. As far as a movie goes, I definitely think it's the best Bruce Lee. I think that goes without saying. I think it definitely delivers uh, what I wanted to kind of to, to, to kind of achieve and to kind of you know present on screen. Well, I don't think it's a, a, a fantastic movie. I definitely feel like, obviously, for myself coming into it like, so late into the game, watching so many other movies within that kind of you know genre, within the kind of so many of the bigger stars that I do personally get connected with a lot more. I definitely think he delivers the best one out of the lot we've seen up to this point, and I'm, I'm very very happy for that because Enter Dragon is the big one. It's the one that everyone talks about. It's the one that has the most influence over everything. And it's still referenced today. It's still kind of got a lot of kind of uh, winks and nods to kind of various other kind of, you know, Western kind of audiences and Asian audiences alike. And they still use him, as mentioned, within like IP Man 4, Green Town. That's been my thoughts and opinions on Enter the Dragon, guys. What are your thoughts, guys? Please comment down below. Do you prefer the theatrical? Do you prefer the special edition? Are you excited for the brand new 4K edition coming out soon? Next up we have is Game of Death, the last official uh, Bruce Lee movie that isn't fully his film. It's kind of like a half and half. So in the meantime, guys, down for the reviews, signing out.